So this video is about post gallbladder surgery. Now, whether you had your gallbladder already removed or you're contemplating getting gallbladder surgery, this video is very, very important for you because anytime you're going to get rid of a very important organ, it's essential that you understand the purpose of that organ and what's inside that organ. What is the gallbladder and what is its function? Well, the gallbladder is mainly a sac that holds bile salts, which I'm going to get to in a second. It stores bile until the next time you eat. And very importantly, it concentrates bile to a factor of 5x. So the significance of that is that when you eat, the gallbladder contracts and releases a very concentrated form of bile salts. And once you have your gallbladder removed, you don't have that concentration of bile salts. You have a trickling of bile salts down from these little bile ducts into the small intestine. And so gallbladder surgery is all about removing the symptoms of a gallbladder, whether it's a stone or other reason. But is this all about symptoms? What about the function of bile itself and what it does? I'm going to explain that. So bile is created from your liver and it trickles down through these little tubes into the gallbladder. And then it also goes down into the small intestine. So bile is a detergent that breaks up fat. Okay. So in this little jar, I have fat. Okay. And then with this, I have detergent, dishwashing liquid. So bile is detergent. So let's see what happens. Mix it with a fat. So I'm going to just take some purified bile salts and put it in this oil here. Okay. Now we're going to mix it up. Now notice what happens. It emulsifies or breaks up the fat into smaller particles. Okay, that's what bile does. It's a detergent that breaks down fat into smaller particles. So the enzyme called lipase in your pancreas can easily break it down into even smaller particles for the small intestine to absorb the things in fat like fat soluble vitamins. So bile is essential for extracting the fat soluble vitamins from your food, like vitamin A. If you're deficient in vitamin A, you can't see in the dark. Vitamin E, it's for the heart. So a lot of vitamin E is stored in the muscles. It's stored in the pituitary to help with maintaining sex hormones. So vitamin E is a very, very essential vitamin and also for protecting the heart. It prevents inflammation and oxidation from the inside of your arteries. So if you don't have enough bile and you can't extract this vitamin E, the heart suffers, the hormones suffer. Then we have vitamin D, which is probably one of the most important vitamins and the majority of the population is deficient in vitamin D. So without bile, you can't absorb vitamin D. Then we have vitamin K, both K1 and K2. If you're deficient in vitamin K1, you bleed easily and you have bruising. If you're deficient in vitamin K2, you have calcium that builds up in the wrong places in the arteries and in your joints. Now, bile is also necessary for extracting essential fatty acids, as in omega-3 fatty acids, which are very, very important as an anti-inflammatory for heart health. And there's a huge long list of many other things as well. Now, when we get to gallstones, what is a gallstone? A gallstone is a super concentrated cholesterol stone. So if we have too much cholesterol and not enough bile salts, we get stones. There's either not enough production of bile from the liver because there's some problem in the liver, or there's a problem in the uh, tubes, the bile ducts, or there's a problem in the gallbladder. But having enough bile um, will prevent gallstones. People think it's the fat that causes gallstones. No, it's not. It's the lack of bile. In fact, it's your cholesterol that makes bile. And without cholesterol, you can't even make bile. Another function of bile is in helping the conversion from T4 to T3. It helps the thyroid convert hormones into the active form of the thyroid hormone. So if there's a problem with the liver or the bile, you're not going to be able to convert these hormones as well. And you could end up with a hypothyroid problem. All right. Another function of bile, number five, is the support of blood sugars. 
So it does help in the regulation of blood sugars. If you don't have enough bile, it can adversely affect your blood sugars. All right, number six, and this is an interesting one. When you eat food, there are certain fats that you eat that have beneficial things, essential fatty acids and fat-soluble vitamins. But is there any type of fat-soluble nutrients in vegetables? And the answer is yes. Certain phytonutrients like carotenoids, uh, chlorophyll is fat soluble. So in order to absorb those really important phytonutrients that give you additional health benefits, you need bile. This is one good reason to add the olive oil to your salad or to eat vegetables with some type of fat, whether it's butter or coconut oil, or olive oil, it helps in the absorption of these fat soluble vitamins, but you also need bile salts. So I hope you're beginning to see some of the important factors of having enough bile in your body and having a gallbladder as well. All right, number seven, bile helps you get rid of excessive cholesterol. In fact, having the bile salts accounts for the majority of cholesterol breakdown. So not having enough bile salts, especially when you go through the ketogenic diet, because you're gonna be consuming more fat, could account for a spike in cholesterol, especially since you are on a low carb diet and you're tapping into the fat cell, which also has not just triglycerides, but it also has cholesterol. And that cholesterol has to be extracted from the fat and it has to go to the liver and out through the bile ducts with the help of your bile. Next point is that bile helps you release toxins. Without enough bile, you become more toxic. If you can't get rid of toxins. All right, number nine, bile is like an anti-pathogenic factor. It helps to kill off microbes, especially in the small intestine. So most of the friendly bacteria are in the large intestine, not the small intestine. We don't want a lot of microbes in the small intestine because Microbes, even friendly microbes, compete for nutrients. 90% of all the absorption of nutrients happens in the small intestine. So we don't want this competition. We want most of the microbes to stay down a large bile. If you don't have enough bile, these microbes tend to exist more in the small intestine. And that condition is called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, SIBO. And one of the causes for that is a lack of bile. And one of the remedies is to take more bile salts to help kill off these microbes. And this is why bile is so important in the body. In fact, a great majority of your bile is recycled because your body considers it viable. In fact, the microbes in your body, the friendly microbes actually make bile salts. They make a secondary bile salts. And one of the reasons for that is it's a strategic anti-pathogenic uh, strategy. It tends to kill off the bad bacteria but the good bacteria um, are not bothered by it, except if there's excessive good bacteria in the wrong place. And number 10, bile is alkaline. So when it's released into the small intestine, just beneath the um, stomach, you have this acid coming through the stomach that gets neutralized by bile salts. So both bile and the juices from the pancreas coming out called bicarbonates are alkaline to help neutralize the acid. If you don't have that alkaline uh, material, the acid could burn a hole in your small intestine and create an ulcer and other issues. So we need it to help alter the pH at the level of the small intestine. So bile is crucial in so many different aspects, uh, but especially in regulating cholesterol, because if we don't have enough bile, the cholesterol can develop these little stones called gallstones, as well as gallbladder sludge, okay, which are micro crystals of stone, and that can block the bile ducts and create some of the same symptoms that a gallstone would. And so when you get your gallbladder checked and there's no stones present, um, you may have a, either a stone in the ducts, the bile ducts, or a sludge, which is very difficult to show up even on a CAT scan. So just make a mental note of that because I'll come back to that later. But cholesterol is not a bad thing, as long as we have enough bile. A couple of points about cholesterol. 
75% of the cholesterol in our body is made by our own body. So because we need it, uh, cholesterol is needed to make certain hormones, especially your sex hormones like testosterone and even estrogen. Um, cholesterol is needed to make cortisol, the main anti-inflammatory hormone in your body. Cholesterol is needed for the membranes of your cells. Uh, and without that, you can't make the membranes of your cell. And cholesterol is needed to make bile as well as vitamin D. And without a gallbladder, you can't concentrate the bile. So if they remove the gallbladder, you're always going to be somewhat deficient. Now, it may not show an obvious symptom, but think about all these other factors that I talked about, um, a lack of vitamin A, for example. You might not recognize or connect the dots between driving at night and not being able to see uh, at night and a bile deficiency. It's not necessarily a dietary vitamin A deficiency. You just can't extract that vitamin A from your foods. And uh, what about the conversion of the thyroid hormones? You may not connect the dots between a lack of bile and a hypothyroid condition. So, all right, so now let's kind of cover some of the symptoms of a classic gallbladder problem. Um, and this can also cover a lack of bile as well. All right, number one, bloating, belching, burping, feeling nauseous, right shoulder pain, pain or tightness in the right side of your scapula or the right trap up here, which can then cause tension in your muscles and literally cause a spasm where it pulls out the vertebra and pinches the nerve and causes pain down the right side, even into the hand. It can also go up into the neck, into your jaw cause right jaw pain, and even headaches on the right side of your head. And you'll be going to the massage therapist for months and months, trying to work out this knot back here, when in fact, it's coming from your gallbladder because there's a nerve right underneath your diaphragm, right next to the gallbladder called the phrenic nerve that travels up to the right side, up into your neck right here. And so when you step on a dog's tail, he barks through his mouth, right? You wouldn't want to mess with the mouth. You take the pressure off the tail. You take the pressure off the gallbladder by making sure that you're not irritating the gallbladder. I will cover that at the end. All right. The next symptom would be tightness underneath the right rib cage. Okay. Because that's where the gallbladder is located. Your gallbladder kind of gets distended. You might not have a gallstone, but the bile ducts are in spasm or there could be some sludge and it creates either a tightness or a pain or an irritation underneath the right rib cage. I had that problem as well as right shoulder pain for about 12 years and I had no clue on what it was. And as a result from that, I've studied the gallbladder and that's why I'm doing this presentation right now. All right, another symptom of a lack of bile or a gallbladder problem would be constipation. Why? Because bile helps to lubricate the colon, okay? In fact, if you actually take purified bile salts, in high quantities, you can end up with diarrhea. So that's one indication that tells you you're taking too much bile. All right, another symptom, I already mentioned this, is gallstones and gall sludge, which is just thickened cholesterol without enough bile. Also, if you're not extracting fat from your food, um, you're gonna crave fatty foods. That's another symptom, uh, itching. That's a symptom of a lack of bile and high cholesterol, especially if you are on the ketogenic diet and you're consuming a lot of fat. And so the solution for gallbladder problems is not to go extremely low fat or lean protein. It's to have an adequate amount of fat with the right ratios with protein, which I'll get to uh, a little bit later. And it's to identify what your problem is. Is your problem maybe a fatty liver or you have cirrhosis or you have some issue that you can't make bile, or are you on the wrong eating plan? I'll get to that very soon. All right, here's some of the problems um, with surgery um, that you will find out when you sign off on the informed consent. Uh, there's complications. It's not a little thing. It's not a completely safe procedure. Um, so you really need to understand what you're getting into uh, before you get into it. So here are some risks. Number one, injury to the bile ducts. It happens in one out of 200 cases um, where you might need another surgery and there's a possibility of having long-term damage to your liver. All right, number two, uh, bile leaks. Okay, so now we have this, this leaky bile that's not being regulated too well because you don't have a gallbladder. So there's nothing to contract and release 
the bile, not to mention concentrate the bile, but that happens about 7% of the time. And then they may have to use this procedure, it's called ERCP. It's both in diagnosing and treating stones in your bile ducts. And the problem with that, it's pretty high risk, uh, especially if you have asymptomatic gallstones in these little ducts. And a duct is just a simple tube. And the risk of having more complications, in fact, worse complications and symptoms than you currently have is about 27% because the complications could be pancreatitis, uh, internal bleeding, and in rare cases, it could be fatal. All right, next complication is injury to your blood vessels in your abdominal cavity. Number four, jaundice, because there could be some obstruction created then you have this backup into the liver and into the blood, and then you start looking yellow. Number five, infection, despite taking antibiotics and using sterile equipment. All right, number six, you can get a hernia right where you had the incision. Uh, number seven, pancreatitis. Eight, injury to the bowel or liver. All right, number nine, blood clots. Number 10, a heart attack. 11, this occurs rarely, but you could die from the surgery. And number 12, continued symptoms that you originally started with. So one complication is this procedure did not resolve the symptoms. All right. So now that you know the basics about the gallbladder, you know the basics about bile, you know about the symptoms, you know about the complications, you know the function. Let's talk about what you can do, whether you are trying to prevent going into surgery with the gallbladder, or you already had surgery and now you still have problems, or maybe you went through the surgery and you don't have problems right now. These are some things that you need to know about. Number one, you want to get on an eating plan that would have prevented this problem in the first place. Okay. And so the main cause of the main problem with the gallbladder, which would be gallstones, would be a lack of bile, but I didn't necessarily discuss what causes a lack of bile. And I'm gonna do that right now. It could be damage from the liver. It could be not having a gallbladder. It could be sludge in the ducts that prevents the flow of bile. It also could be high levels of insulin. In fact, that's a very common cause of a lack of bile. Your insulin is too high because you have blood sugar issues. You're consuming a high carbohydrate diet. Another cause could be high levels of estrogen. This is why women who are pregnant many times end up with a gallbladder problem or a gallstone or even hypothyroid conditions at pregnancy because when you have lack of bile, you can't convert the thyroid hormones. So too much estrogen can be a factor. Too much cortisol from stress can cause a lack of bile. And being on a low fat diet, whether you're a vegan or just go low fat could be a cause because we need this saturated fat to trigger the release of bile. Now also consuming um, very, very lean protein as in protein powders, especially these protein powders that are in a lot of these diets like ideal protein, concentrated protein powder mixes and consuming low fat protein bars especially with soy protein isolates can be really hard on the gallbladder. And in practice, I've had quite a few people come in after doing these diets and I've noticed a high incidence of gallbladder problems after they started. So you wanna avoid a low fat diet. You want to do the healthy version of the ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting so as to not stress out the digestive system so frequently. The only thing I want to mention about uh, being on a high fat diet, I would do the ketogenic diet, but I wouldn't add additional fat, like in these uh, keto cookies and these keto snacks, like a lot of people do. One special note about MCT oil, okay? MCT oil is a type of fat that doesn't stress the gallbladder out like other fats. So a little bit of MCT oil uh, might be okay. So number one, get on a healthy keto uh, plan with intermittent fasting. Number two, supply some purified bile salts to your diet when you're eating. So in other words, take some purified bile salts with meals. The one that I'm going to recommend is called gallbladder formula. I put a link down below because in this formula, there's not just purified bile salts, but betaine hydrochloride to help the stomach. You need the stomach to be very, very acid 
to help release bile salts. And there's a lot of additional factors to support the pancreas with enzymes. There's also herbs to help thin the bile. And I put a link down below for more information on that. All right, number three, manual therapy. Now, what do I mean manual therapy? This is something that I initially experimented with in practice, and I developed a really simple um, but very effective technique that you can do some gentle massage around the gallbladder and the pancreas and the digestive organs. And I will put a link down below of how to do this, but basically you're just helping the flow of this sludge that could be backed up in your bile ducts. So if you already had your gallbladder removed and you probably have some incision on the right side, you don't want to be massaging um, or doing any type of manual therapy in that area. Why? Because there was an injury to that area. Instead, you would want to work on the opposite side, on the pancreas side. And I put a diagram exactly where to press. It's basically the mirror image or opposite point to where you had the surgery. So if you had surgery on the right side, about an inch inward off the middle part of the midline, you start pressing or massaging very gently on the opposite or left side. And you just press and feel around very gently until you find a very, very tender spot. And you just gently massage it for a couple of minutes and it will give you a lot of relief if you have residual pain. So that's one thing. But if you haven't removed the gallbladder, you can, in addition to massaging the left side, you can massage the right side too. Let's say you did one through three and you still have problems. What do you do? There's a really great remedy. You can do a search on it on Amazon. It's called Tudka, okay? And Tudka is a type of bile salt that is very, very unique and it can help thin the bile. So if you have sludge that is backing up in these bile ducts and creating a lot of discomfort, you can take Tudka on an empty stomach. You can take one to two at a time, once or twice a day, depending on how severe it is, and give yourself a lot of relief. I would highly recommend you only take this on an empty stomach because if you take it with food, it will actually work on the food, not necessarily kind of act as a Drano to help open up the clogged pipes. So I have a very interesting video on Tutka, which I put a link down below. But the most important thing you need to do right now is get started with the eating plan, a healthy keto plan with intermittent fasting. I put three very simple videos up on a playlist right here. Check it out.